Hey, my name is Chris Craddock with REI Revive. You're listening to the Fearless Investor Podcast with my good friend, Kyle Stanley. Keep listening to learn how to conquer the world of investing. Welcome into the Fearless Investor Podcast. You're listening to me, Kyle Stanley. Looking forward to getting to this episode with Chris Craddock. A lot of energy, and he is super excited about a concept that most of us should already be pursuing if we're either an agent or an investor. Uh, however, I, I agree with Chris. I don't think many people are looking to uh, have a uh, collaborative relationship uh, with, with those two sides. I feel like there's a lot of competition amongst realtors and investors. And Chris is going to show and give a great story of how that can be something that you really can benefit from. So before we get to that, let's make sure to thank our sponsor, Boostly. And I uh, just want to hear from them first. So listen up in case you didn't know, guys, it's 2021. Things are changing in the short-term rentals world. Uh, and hosts, you can't keep relying on Airbnb to bring you all of your business. You have to start booking directly to your customer. How do you do this? It's very simple. You own your own direct booking website, but don't cut corners. A free site is not going to do the job, especially if it is not WordPress. And I know what you're thinking right now, because I was thinking this before I started my own direct booking site. It's either going to take a lot of time or a lot of energy or a lot of money, right? Well, that's where Boostly actually comes in. Boostly is the best in the business for website design for the short-term rentals industry, uh, servicing over 600 clients worldwide. Every website is built for you and pricing starts at $99. Doesn't matter if you have one or 100. And my good friend, Mark Simpson, who is the founder of Boostly, tells me it's guaranteed to get you direct bookings or your money back. Just book a call with Mark's team at boostly.co.uk forward slash fearless. Your future business will thank you for it. Again, that's boostly, B-O-O-S-T-L-Y dot C-O dot U-K forward slash fearless. Now let's get to it with Chris Craddock here on the Fearless Investor Podcast. Hey, welcome in. We've got Chris Craddock coming in from the DC area. Uh, also a, po a podcast host, Chris with REI Revive. Thanks for joining us today, man. Hey, brother. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Awesome. Hey, you, you've got you've got the podcast voice too. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, is, it, is it better to have a voice for podcasting or a, a face for podcast? <laughs> it, <laughs> face for radio. At, right. at least you don't have a voice for newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, that's when you know you're in trouble. Hey, Chris, uh, let's get started, man. What is your most interesting, strangest real estate investing story? Uh, I've got a number of them, but I'll, I'll go to the one that is just nutty. I bought a house um, and the guy decided that he didn't want to move on and ended up blowing up the house. Like, I kid you not, talk about a deal that blows up. I'm sitting there talking with somebody, uh, I'm interviewing somebody actually, and my I thought my watch was, I had a Fitbit at the time watch, and I thought it was just bugging out because it just wouldn't stop buzzing. My mom, my mom, my wife, my brother, and my uh, one of the guys that brought me the deal were just calling me nonstop, bam, 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 bam. And so, uh, yeah, it turns out he blew it up and uh, totaled the house next to him as well. 17 cars blown up. It was crazy. What? I know like, I'm, this is real life. This, this is what you read about, about other people, not about me. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, okay. I mean, Hey, listen, I I've, I've heard of people saying if you can't have, or if I can't have it, then no one can, but uh, I, that's, that's a whole new level. Next level. <laughs> I, start a fire. Like don't blow the place up. Holy cow. Um, okay. Well, that, that is actually, I can tell you, we've done now close to 200 episodes. That might be my favorite story so far. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris. Well, Hey, with that bang, let's get started in the show. Um, tell, tell people a little bit about yourself. I know that you have a huge uh, belief in, um, you know, the, the real estate investing plus agent, uh, cohesion, uh, if that, if that's even the word I'm looking for, but before we jump into that, how did you get into real estate? Where were you before, um, REI? Yeah. So I was, um, I was on staff, you know, my life was changed like incredibly, uh, through an organization called young life. And, um, when I graduated high school, I went on staff with young life and I loved it. 
but you can only make $20,000 a year so long in the DC area <laughs> before things get crazy. So I started flipping houses to continue doing uh, uh, the work with high schoolers and, and ministry stuff that I was doing. And then uh, uh, one thing led to another. I'd always led large teams of volunteers, went back to school, got a doctorate in leadership and uh, ended up just really enjoying that. And then I read, uh, so I, I kept flipping houses read Gary Keller's book about the millionaire real estate agent and uh, built a big retail team. And about, I guess it was three or four years ago, I just saw the synergy that could happen if agents and investors work together because investors are just leaving so much money on the table and agents, man, they're, they're always looking for listings. So there's, there's just a synergy there. And we saw that it took a little while to kind of crack that code uh, but then we did that and, you know, just been off to the races ever since. Awesome. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot to talk about there. Before we do, uh, you know, you've got nine different businesses. So <laughs> how did that happen, first of all? Uh, and, and is there ones that you like more than others that you put more time into more than others? Give us a little overview if you can. Yeah, nine businesses and six kids. And we can talk about how that happened Ooh. next. Wow. So, <laughs> oh, so uh, yeah, no, we... Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, so I just, I really do believe that there's a genius of the and like Jim, Jim Collins talks about. And so all of my businesses are in the real estate space. They're all synergistic with each other, you know, uh, you know, agent world, title world, uh, you know, some private hard money lending, um, insurance, just all of these construction, all of these businesses that are all in the same space uh, that, that feed each other really. Um, and there's a bunch more, but we don't need to go through it all. But, but the bottom line is uh, with it, as you see, um, one of my business coaches, which I think it's really important to, to always have coaching. And I always have, I spend almost six figures a year on coaches um, because I think your business grows to the extent that you grow and that's the best investment you can make. And so um, one of my business coaches said, Hey, if, if there's a way to make more money and, and get paid more than one time in a compliant way, you should always try to do that. You can either get more clients or more of the client. And uh, as we started looking, um, it's really, really, really important to not um, only focus on your top line, but also your bottom line as well, um, which is part of the whole uh, idea behind the REI Revive uh, piece is that um, if you're already paying for leads, there, there's a way to increase your bottom line as well as your top line. So I'm a big believer in not getting shiny object syndrome. So was this a moment of like, wow, if I can do one, I can do it all and shiny object syndrome, or was there some solidifying of one business before moving on to the next? So I had been an agent with Keller Williams for a while and uh, was part of Gary Keller's small group of agents. And I still remember one of the things Gary said was, um, he's like, you can have a hundred businesses as you, if you want, but you just have to have a, a folder with that business inside of it. And it's got to have a face on the front of the folder, a who, and that who needs to not be you. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. that was the whole idea. And so each one of these businesses has somebody else that's running them. Um, that's not me. And that's, that's, that, that's the whole key there is um, if you are running everything, it, it is shiny object. You can, you're going to be the bottleneck and no matter how talented you are, or how good you are, you can't be good. You can do, you can do anything, but you can't do everything. And so that's why, um, you know, leverage is so, so powerful to bring people in that can be really, really good at what they do. And then you partner with them and you, you can all make a lot of money together. Yeah. That's, that's so awesome. I think that word bottleneck too, is a really good way of putting it because, um, we, we get these things that happen, right? Whether it's building a new business or we get into one business and we are trying to figure out, man, I'm putting in all this time into this one activity and how in the world do I remove myself from that activity, which essentially is the bottleneck. Um, so that, that is super uh, inspiring and intriguing, man. Like to me, a lot of people would not be able to release themselves of that control and just be like, yeah, you go control the business, even though I'm really the, the owner of it. Um, that had to be tough. Yeah. I mean, it is, it is, and it isn't, you know um, you know, I've always led large teams. And so, uh, and, and that's part of the reason why I went back to school and, and got the doctorate in leadership. But one of the, like, I've just, 
man, I'll tell you, I'm one of my favorite people in the world. And he's been a mentor to me that I've never met. And I wish I would have met him before he passed away. But uh, Zig Ziglar, a lot of people mm, know the name. Yeah. And uh, Zig says, you can have everything else in life if you help enough other people get what they want in life. Yeah. And so that's pretty much it. If you understand that, that other people are dying for opportunities, they're looking for opportunities. And if you can create a great opportunity where somebody else can can create freedom, economic freedom, life freedom, um, you know, a business that they want through, through working together, man, it is, it is just powerful. And it's fun to watch too. It's fun to watch other people really grow into who they could, could become if they really had the opportunity to do that. That's so cool. So of, of all those businesses, is there one that you actually do have your face on or are all nine of them other people's faces? Well, bro, this is, <laughs> this has been one of the biggest things over the last couple of years. So for me, I was working like crazy and I got to meet a couple of friends um, who have stepped back. One of them, he told me his story. I know you love stories. I, I'm a big story guy as well. And so stories, I think stories really are powerful. And he told me his story. He said that uh, he was um, working 110 hours a week, 50 pounds heavier than he is today. His wife was literally about to divorce him. And he, I mean, he was making good money, but it was just he was the, the face of the company. And he said, Chris, I had to learn how to step back or I was going to lose everything I cared about. You know, I'd make a lot of money, but I'd lose everything I cared about. And so he stepped back and he's like, Chris, you probably will not believe me until you talk to the people in my world. But I literally work less than five hours a week. I make five times what I made when I was the, the 110 hour worker um, because I've learned how to bring in great people who can all do um, more than what I'm doing in their world. And each part of our business just got better by doing that. And so when I started seeing that, I started to, to move back as well. Actually, uh, you know, if you'd like, I, I have like a handful of books that I just made my Bible for a year. And those books really taught me how to become not, not just work in the business better, but work on the business and become a business owner rather than an operator. And it changed my life. Yeah. What, what are some of those books? So one of them I love is Clockwork, written by uh, Mike Michalowicz, who also wrote Profit First. A lot of people probably heard that book. Um, one of the books is EOS Traction, um, really, really powerful book, 12-week uh, year. Uh, another one, uh, The E-Myth, is, is another really, really nice. great one. Uh, the book Scrum is, is another one. And then the last one, this one is a newer one to me. Um, but Dan Sullivan just wrote uh, Who Not How and, uh, you know, the, the importance of bringing in other people into your world because you don't necessarily need to know the how as long as you bring the right who into your world. And man, I'll tell you, I just made those books like my Bible for a year and it really, really changed the way I look at like the whole life, really. That's great. We're going to have to add those into the show notes so people can reference them. I'm really surprised I didn't hear the four hour work week because that's a really popular one, too. Yeah, it is. You know, that it is interesting that that wasn't, I, I do love Tim Ferriss, yeah. um, you know, love Tools of the Titans. It's one of my favorite books, but, uh, um, uh, but yeah, no, I, that probably should have been in there. <laughs> <laughs> when, when I, I love that book, but when he started talking about outsourcing the, uh, I love you calls to his wife, that's when he kind of lost me. <laughs> <laughs> I can see how that could go. Actually, I'll tell you, um, Man, I, I can't believe I'm going to say this on a podcast. My wife's going to kill me. But oh. one year, um, I was so busy on Valentine's Day and I called my assistant and I was like, hey, can you send flowers to my wife for me? And I got home and my wife was like so happy. She's like, she's like the, the note that you wrote was so amazing. She's like, it didn't sound like it, it didn't sound like that you. And, and I was like, oh, and she's like, you didn't write the note, did you? And I was like, oh, gosh. Who did it? And, and, and like, she loves my sister. She she thinks she's the greatest. We're like they love each other. But uh, but yeah, it was it was so funny. I mean, I got so much trouble for that one. <laughs> your, your assistant did too good of a job. She did too good. <laughs> like this doesn't sound like you. It's way too romantic. <laughs> oh gosh, that's amazing. That's so amazing. Uh, okay. Well, speaking of romance, I'll say this. It goes back to outsourcing, right? Somebody yeah. else will do your job better than you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I love it. Well, hey, speaking of romance, there you you can kind of summarize the way that you look at real estate agents and real estate investors as almost like a romance because you want them working together, uh, not competing. And and I think you have some really cool ideas about this. So I would love to um, figure out first 
Uh, like, was, was there a moment of like, aha, or because like, you, you even said to me before we got on the podcast, you're like, I don't know why no one else is thinking about this. So was there that moment for you that you were like, wow, this could really be something that I could help a lot of people with? Yeah. So, so, you know, just tell them like a, a short story of how, how the genesis of this was um, I had been growing my real estate agent team and I had somebody say to me, and I was just working so much harder, but just getting incrementally better. And I'm like, man, I want to get chunks better. And I heard somebody say to me, they're like, well, then you need to go find somebody that has a lot of leads so that you can build relationships that will get you 10 more deals, 20 more deals, 100 more deals. And I thought about it. I'm like, I could go to builders. I could go to uh, attorneys. And then I'm like, you know what? I got into this world through investment. And I thought about, uh, there was this, a big wholesaler in my area, one of the biggest wholesalers in the country. And I was like, man, what do they do with all the leads that they don't wholesale? And so I started building a relationship with them. And actually the funny thing was um, they had tried to work with an agent for years. Like they they tried to open a brokerage. They, they spent a lot of time, money and energy doing this. And so they just weren't interested because they're like, we've been there done that. We've tried it. And they're really smart, really good. So they tried it at a high level and I'm like, Listen, there is something to be here done here. We just got to crack the code. So they kept saying, no, no, not interested. Not, and, and one of the things I've learned in life is persistence breaks resistance, right? Mm. That is how you win. And so I kept calling and kept calling and, and you know, not, not being a punk, but just being nice about it. And so they were being nice to me, but just kept nicely saying no. And so finally they gave me 150 leads. And I heard that the person they were working with before, uh, they gave a thousand leads, they closed six deals. And so for me, I'm like, okay, I got to close six deals with these 150 leads. Yeah. Well, 70 of them were already closed. They, they sold with an investor or sold with an agent, whatever. So half of them were gone. 30 of them were out of area. So I had like 40 deal, 40 people to close six deals with. And I'm like, dang, but I'm like, game on, let's do this. And so I, uh, I knew six was my, my mark. I closed six of them. I called them and told them I, I had six closed and like, Chris, those leads were like five years old. We wanted you to like leave us alone because you just kept calling. Oh my gosh. You got six closed, come on in. And so we came in, we met, we started building this thing out together. And uh, and I kid you not, at this point, um, I send them, my, my real estate agent team sends them over $60,000 every month in referral wow. fees. That's found money. Like how life-changing is, I don't care how big a business is, an extra 60K a month for stuff that you've already been paying for that are lying dead in your database is yeah. life-changing. It's, it's huge. It's huge. That's amazing. I mean, so what do you think the difference was for you versus this company to be able to close six of literally only 40 qualified and by the way, five-year-old leads versus this other company with a thousand and only being able to close six? Well, see, I, I think the, the big difference is, um, you know, as a, as a salesperson, I think a lot of people think of sales as like a dirty word or a pushy thing, like Grant Cardone, get in your face. I, I think of sales more of a, as like a doctor, right? Um, I've had, uh, I played rugby in college. So I got three shoulder surgeries on my left, one on my right, knee Ooh. surgery, all the other stuff. So I, every time I go into the doctor, they would start doing all these tests on me until they found pain. And then when I, I said, ah, that hurts. Then they, they do it again. <laughs> they, so they, they found the pain and then they could give me a prescription. Then they could, could solve it or tell me I need surgery or, or whatever. Like give, tell me how to make it better. And so I think that's what sales really is, mm. is I would go into these people and I would say, okay, why did you call an investor, not an agent? And I found out there were five reasons why everybody calls an investor and not an agent. Um, and then I'd say, okay. Um, and then I'd realize that of those five reasons that, uh, that, that, usually they're associated with some sort of pain. And if I can write them a prescription that will solve their pain, then you can win. It goes back to Zig Ziglar. You know, you can have everything you want if you help other people get what they want. And so when we, when I started looking at it like that, rather than a regular real estate agent, which is how most agents look at it, they just open up even good ones. The, the agent they were giving it to is a great one. But the problem is they just open it up and treat it like a regular listing presentation. Right. And that's not the way you do it. You solve people's problem. You make a lot of money. I love it. I love it. Um, I, I have a question to put you on the spot. I don't know if you know them off the top of your head, but you said there's five different reasons why people use an investor. Do you know them? Yeah, I, absolutely. Um, don't want to pay a real estate agent commission. Um, 
I want to sell quick. Maybe they have a foreclosure mm -hmm. pending, or maybe they um, just have some a job relocation, something like that. Um, may, they think that their house is too jacked up to sell on the MLS. Um, they want privacy. Maybe they're a hoarder and they don't want people coming into their uh, um, their house and mm -hmm. seeing what's going on, or they don't want their neighbors to see pictures of what they've done to the house as like a hoarder. Or the last one is they don't want people coming through at all hours of the day. They 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 just want a quick sale so that people are coming through and, and uh, you know, making it inconvenient to sell. So if, if you know that it's going to be one of those five reasons, um, I'd say over 90, you know, almost everybody that I saw was that. So when I could, when we created scripting around all of those five reasons that really, really hit hard, um, we could, we, we changed from a low closing rate to a massive closing rate. That's great. That's really great. Um, you know, just, just to take one of those, for example, you know, Hey, I'm a, I'm a hoarder. I don't want people walking through my house. What would you say to that? Yeah. So, um, well, if, if they don't want people, if, if they're a hoarder, it's a different one than if I don't want people walk like, so the hoarder looks for privacy more. Okay. So with the hoarder, what we do is, um, you know, we'll, we'll look for uh, strategic open house options. So we don't let people come through all the time. We price it below market knowing and then this is a big problem that a lot of people have is they they'll price the house and think and take the first good offer they have you always have to give it exposure you have to give it a little bit of time so you price so let's say we we list it on a wednesday but we don't let anybody into the house until a three hour open on sunday um and then on and no pictures no anything you price it under market you're going to get a bunch of offers especially in a market like this and then you negotiate well. And that's that's part of what is really important too, is you got to pick the right agent because most agents don't have any idea. They'll they'll brag about the fact that their house sold in two, they sold a house in two hours. And I'm like, you just cost your person 20 grand probably. Yeah. You yeah. know, and so so that's that whole idea is you give it enough exposure and then you get it bid up. You don't have to put pictures up if you price it low enough. I love it. I love it. Um so yeah, I mean, why do you, you know, you just gave a really good example of if I'm a wholesaler, I've got all these dead leads, how just handing them off to someone could create as much as $60,000 a month. And then on the other side, realtors who are thinking, man, I just want more listings and they're not going to investors. Why do you think there's that disconnect? Yeah, well, one of the things I learned that I thought was really, this is just, just an interesting data point real estate investors are willing to spend a, a high, high fixed cost, which means they're willing to pay up front a lot of money for marketing. And for whatever reason, real estate agents don't like to spend a lot of money up front. Um, real estate agents are willing to pay a much higher variable cost. And a variable cost is, is when you sell a portion of what they sell. So they're willing to give a much bigger referral fee um, on a closed transaction. So it's more certainty. Um, which is why I think the two of them live in different worlds. Mm. Investors are, are okay with less certainty. Agents want more certainty. And so um, I think that's one of the big things. Also, let's be honest. Um, there's a lot of agents that are never willing to think creatively. And most, most investors are creative thinkers. And that's why they became investors. They, they're trying to solve problems, be creative. And the other problem is the more creative you are, a lot of times the more likely to blur lines and do things they shouldn't be doing and not, you know, not follow the rules, like just the, run by the seat of their pants and, and, you know, have bad contracts, have, you know, do things they shouldn't be doing. And so a lot of times agents stay away from that. And the reality is there's terrible agents and there's terrible investors, but that's not the norm. Like the mm -hmm. majority of, of investors are great people that are doing the right thing. And the majority of agents you know, I don't want to say majority, a lot of agents are, are very good, but you, you just got to find the right one. And, uh, you know, that, and if you do that, you can create a massive partnership that's so profitable for both sides. I love it. I love it. That's really cool. Um, so if I'm on either side right now, how would I go about starting something like this? Is it, you know, it sounds like you just sat down with a, uh, a wholesaler and just pretty much sold yourself. Uh, would you suggest the same thing? Yeah. So, um, so if you're an investor, what I would just say is this, I mean, this, this is why I created my, um, my program REI revive was so that I can, you know, shorten that learning curve, take all the stuff. It took me years to, to 
cultivate and get it done in a short, short period of time. And so, and I'm, I'm seeing that happen. I, I, one group I brought in um, from the Midwest and they literally, the wife was an agent, the husband was the investor and they said, oh, we got this down, we got this down. And I got a call 75 days into them being in our, uh, uh, in our program. And j they just said, Chris, we've made $90,000, you know, in pocket and pending in the last two and a half months. And, and literally I, I got goosebumps. Like, this has changed our life. And so um, I would just say, you know, sign up for the, the program. I think that's the easiest way to do it. Um, but what I would say is this, you, you got to find the right people. If you're an investor, you got to find the right agent. If you're an agent, you got to be a go-getter. You, you get, get to that, um, find the investors that are doing a lot of business. But I'll tell you, most of them aren't going to be interested. You're really going to have to convince them um, and show them case studies on, on what's going on. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's why, you know, I, I just came on as a, a coach at Wholesaling Inc. And uh, so we're, we've launched our program through Wholesaling Inc. Uh, because of the fact that um, this is, I, I just think so many people are leaving so much money on the table. People are getting paid for all of those leads. It's just not you usually. <laughs> yeah, no, I, just like what you said earlier, right? Persistence will uh, overcome resistance. So uh, that's good, man. So how can people uh, look more into your program and maybe connect more with you? Yeah. So one, I know the average listener to a podcast listens to seven podcasts. So stay listening to this one, but I'd love to be one of your other seven um, on Uncommon Real Estate. Um, the uh, My Instagram handle, it's an old high school nickname. It's at Cradrock, C-R-A-D-D-R-O-C-K. So don't make fun of me too much for it. I try to respond to DMs on that. Um, and then you can also go to wholesalinginc.com forward slash revive. And on that, you can you can click on the the link, and um, we can do a just basically do a business consult to see if this is a good fit for you. Awesome, sounds great, Chris. Uh, any last words for our audience before we log off here? Now, I'll tell you one of the things that I've I've seen a lot of people say is, oh, I can, I'll just go find an agent, I'll go do all the different things, and and you might be able to, and and I'm not saying that you wouldn't. What I'll just say is in this business. Um, the reason I spend almost uh, six figure, well, why I spend about six figures a year on coaching is because I think speed equals a lot of money in this business. Every day that you do not learn the new thing, it, it costs you thousands and thousands of dollars. So I'll just say this. Um, I always say imitate then innovate, right? If, if you can go and find somebody that's doing something that you want to do and they can shorten that learning curve, it's going to make you so much money so fast you know, you should pay anything for it. And uh, that's why I pay for, for coaches and, and people that, that shorten my learning curve all the time. Amen. Preach it. Uh, I love it. Uh, that's, that's exactly what I say too. Um, all right. Well, cool, man. Thank you so much, Chris Craddock for being on the show and helping our audience to conquer the world of investing. All right. Show notes for this one are going to be fearlesskyle.com forward slash REI revive, just like how it sounds, REI revive. And I, I love the, the points that Chris makes. I, I love the mindset that he has. I think the biggest thing for me is if I were to go back and do it all over again, um, I, I still don't think that I would get my real estate license. Um, and the reason being, I'd much rather collaborate with a realtor who's going to be able to take on a lot of the leads that I send their way and be able to pay me referral fees or be able to create relationships that are uh, no, we know that we're not in competition with each other. I know that they are able to take the transactional side and that they know that I'm not able to take the transactional side because I'm not a realtor and that I can, uh, we can work collaboratively. I think that's the biggest thing. And so, um, that was one question I didn't ask Chris and I, I kind of wish I did was what are for those that are thinking, Hey, uh, what if I just become a realtor myself and do both? I think that's a great idea. I just think, uh, when it comes down to it. For me, I think I can cover more ground if I develop great relationships with realtors rather than being the realtor myself. That's just my thought. So anyway, that's it here on the Fearless Investor Podcast. We're helping you to conquer the world of investing. As always, make sure to follow us on Instagram at Fearless Kyle and also leave us a review on this show. We need those five stars, need those reviews. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time.